here we can see it on our mandalas. We continue following ourselves around the wheel. So the sun is in gate one, it's the creative and it's an identity center gate pointing upward. And then the earth is in gate two, which is the receptive, which is that identity center gate pointing downward. These two gates make, of course, the Sphinx, um, the mutative. Well, uh, yeah, that's right. We're into the mutative quarter, like you were saying, and they really provide the individual unique direction of, of the being. And they're so polar opposite, yet they're so the same. I can't wait to keep talking about it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So here we have gate one, um, which is uh, the creative. It's the gate of self-expression and it's creation as a primal force. This is the energy potential to manifest inspiration without limitation. It's an identity gate and it's part of individual circuitry. So individual think empowerment and it's part of the knowing subcircuitry, right? And it links up with gate eight, making the one eight channel, which is the channel of inspiration. And gate one is the drive and deep need to focus on expressing oneself in unique and creative ways. You do not care about being the best. You simply wish to live out your true creative nature, your authentic individuality, exemplifying new ways of expressing your authentic self. And you empower others to consider new perspectives or new ways of being in the world. Gate one is this beautiful sense that all of humanity knows that at times because all of the stuff that is gate one and gate two comes in a pulse and we've described this pulse before this creative pulse that is the point of the creative pulse is it is like magic it means there's nothing and now there's something where to come from it well if you're religious or spiritual it came from god you know what i mean or it came from our antennae into the but it really the it also creator from the bigger that it, than us whatever you want to call also, it and it also co-created or just straight up created within us it's the expression of self-creativity that knows no limitation and can uh, on its face it knows no limitation and it also cannot be invoked per se you can put yourself in places to be creative but you can't invoke the actual moment of creativity it's it's inspiration without limitation independent of will is really yeah independent of will that's what i love about it. it's like i will this to happen no mind you take a back seat have a seat get yourself a slushy take a nap you know it'll happen when it happens fascinating all right on to gate two so this is the receptive and it's the gate of the direction of self it's receptivity as the primal base through which any response is determined and it's mm. the root of action right so it's also part of the identity center Right. And it's individual empowerment is our theme for individual circuitry and also part of the knowing subcircuitry, just like it's a gate one pair. And then it links up with gate 14, which is power skills. And then the 14 two is the channel of the beat. And this is higher knowing of gate two rooted in direction of the self toward love and beauty via the magnetic monopole, the driver. And this focused on our movement in time through space, and it's built into your design as an innate sense of inner direction, not based on location. By simply aligning to your own direction, you automatically empower or confirm in others their own sense of direction. It's just so gorgeous because the gate one is the yangest of all gates, all, all solid lines. Gate two has to be its mirror opposite to be in opposition on the wheel. So it's no yang lines, all yin, straight up the center. And it's receptivity. The receptive is the perfect name for it because it waits to be receptive. It almost acts like a generator. And why wouldn't it? It's in the it's in one of the tantric channels that goes 14 to two. So I, I love this reception. It What it's doing literally at the time is it's helping us guide ourselves towards exactly what the language here says, towards beauty towards aesthetic pleasingness, towards the thing that creates community and makes people want to stay in it. So it's yet it's again without limitation and independent of will. So humanity is being dragged along by these two gates that point the individual direction, you know, and that's the most important part is the individual direction as it relates to um we'll die without it, you know, I mean because that will kill our self-expression. And as it points that and moves that, these two gates guarantee we're open and receptive towards the yang force that wants to drive like the light into its creativity in a pulse independent of your mind. Independent of mind. Yep. Wow. Yeah. 
Perfect. All right. So now we have the incarnation. So people born this week, first we start with the right angle cross of the Sphinx. Right? And this is what's starting ourselves in this new quarter. And this is creative individuals trying to build a legacy to express and immortalize their own direction, providing and maintaining a mutative direction through example. Mm -hmm. then, we'll, then we'll move on into the juxtaposition cross of self-expression, which is socially adept people fixed on providing creative and revolutionary answers for questions which have not yet been asked. And then finally, we'll move into the left angle cross of defiance. And this is individuals who attract society, but are here to, pro to protect difference. The fierceness to demand non-interference in any form in order to preserve uniqueness. Beautiful. So we go from, let's move a direction from the right angle to, hey guys, I'm expressing the thing and I'm fixed in this way to hell with y'all. And whoever not hell with y'all, come on along. Thank you. Um, which is usually less than you know five percent of the crowd. Um, and it's just defiant. It's defiant but lawful. There's no there's nothing bad or even rude about this per se until the other tries to make it stop being that way. Then there's confrontation. You know, that defiance will definitely, you know, lead to a form of confrontation over time. Unless it's in a six two, then it'll just that person will just go away potentially. Or they'll mm. say something. They just disappear. Um, yep. All right. So finally, we have the hexagram. So November 5th through the 10th. First, the sun is in gate one, which is the creative, and that's heaven over heaven. So this is really fun and interesting because you see it's six solid, unbroken lines. And so that's all uh, referring to like the masculine energy. So uh, gate one in the I Ching with that, the hexagram is that pure masculine creative force. And so this one states, the heavens move ceaselessly. A noble one in his own strength does not pause. Creative force is the absolute power of heaven that moves the stars in their courses and makes the seasons turn. A noble one finds this creative force is within him as close as his own breath. It does not need to pause and rest, and nor does he. Oh, God, that's that's gorgeous. It's, it's speaking towards this um, defiance that shows up. Um, you know, when people are attempting to change your way and heaven over heaven just says that the yang force, which is the driving light of the sun, the sun drives its light into the earth, but it's mother earth that raises up the life, obviously. And so it just says the light points towards heaven. I think that's gorgeous. The noble one sees that the light points towards heaven. It's not quite in my hands. The creative one will appear. It's always appearing. And don't try to say it's not. Oh, I love that. Thank you. And mm -hmm. then next up, we have the earth in gate two, which is the receptive. And in the I Ching, it just says earth. <laughs> and the imagery for this one is power of the land, earth. A noble one with generous character carries all the, be the beings. Through the power of the land, earth is heaven's partner in bringing the world into being. The sun needs a place to shine, rain a place to fall, and seeds need soil to grow in. Flashes of inspiration need space and time to expand and take shape. Great ideas need work to be realized. The power of the land is to provide everything needed for all things to find their shape. A noble one embodies this power in the deep generosity of her character. She certainly need never worry about the limits of her strength. Nor the limits of her power connected to gate 14, um, ultimately. The power of earth, the power of gate 2, um, and this all sounds very nice because it says that that the yang force of the sun drives towards heaven, but it's counterbalanced. It's almost like there is no heaven without earth. In yeah, a you way. can't you, you can't have light without the darkness. You can't have without, darkness without the light. Right, but, you can't have but heaven the, without a contrast of earth. You can't have an earth without the contrast of heaven. Absolutely, except that in this case, the earth isn't dark. The earth almost shares the light with gate one in a way. It's, it's just like that, the yin yang. Yeah, totally. And, and it is, even all the language was very open and receptive and mother and feminine like, you know, yin like. And, but the thing is, listen, there's, it's easy to have a romance with gate one, right? Yeah. It's got no, it's got no sacral juice. It can't really, it, but it is its own thing. Um, and everyone wants a love affair with that one. This one here is just as spry and, 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 you know, thorny at times because gate two's in a hurry. Mm. 
And if that's a response from the sacral, it's it's sustainingly in a hurry. If that's yeah. not a response from the sacral, it's still in a hurry. It's maybe even more in a hurry in a way before the energy runs out. It wants to receive the right workload being done to move us in a direction that takes humanity towards the beauty of not just aesthetics. Gate two says, I am the magnetic monopole. I latch onto a direction. If that direction is towards beauty, harmony, literally harmony with others and what is ultimately communion to allow the spirit to flow gate one the spirit through gate one in this case then we're in the right direction and i've hooked you onto a geometry and if you're not paying attention to that you go in the wrong direction so she, she listen she will beat you down if you go in the wrong direction is my point you know what i'm saying oh, yeah. yes grandma pluto she's like i'm not here to be nice i'm here to tell it you like it is but i uh -huh. love you uh -huh, you know uh -huh. so this is a lot of that so the earth is is the perfect analogy for it because the earth has water raging seas it has fire it has placid lakes it has beauty it has it all it has life and that life is impatient in humans it would like to get to the end game of communion beauty and the spirit of the self being recognized this is all humanity wants to thrive literally we'll be fine if we get those things so well, that's super oh, beautiful. All right. What so, can they expect? Yeah, tying it all together, right? So I always like to start with the earth positioning and getting the earth positioning kind of in order for ourselves, right? Because that's what's going to receive the the sun and that's what's going to ground us. So what I would mm -hmm. think for like gate two in as the earth, it's like make yourself ready to receive, if that makes sense. You know, like take care of yourself. Just like if you were planting like seeds to like grow something and then eventually come to harvest, it's like, you're not just gonna take like rocks and pebbles and stuff when that's not correct for the seed, right? You want good soil, you want it to be, you know, is it the succulent soil or is it a moist soil? You know, what are you gonna put in there? Is it sandy? You know, like you right. have to prepare the soil. You add the amendments or the fertilizer, right? You wanna put all that nourishment into the soil before you're even planting that seed, which would then be the sun, right? And that's like gate one and that creative. So put ourselves in that place of receptivity and we have to take care of ourselves in order to receive anything, right? Like if you're just like a chaotic mess, you can't even receive a gift that someone's giving you. So take care of yourself, prepare that soil of yourself to, to be nourished and fertilized and receptive. So then we can shine that creative force energy and going in that like gate one, yang, sunshiny direction into that creative expression of yourself from that core of your heart, of your identity and like where you're going. Gotcha. So um, I'm so thrilled. And I know I mentioned this before that um, that we are a man and a woman doing this. Because yeah. I would have bypassed all that beauty you just said, in a sense, to say, listen, y'all are in a hurry to do something. One, two, three, go. This okay. is, again, I, this is a time this week, all this week, is your creative urges will show up. There will be a little bit of impatience in your body. You'll sense it. You'll know it. Now you can sort of see what that is. Surrender to it. Relent into it. Allow it. Don't put yourself in any trouble. Some creative things will get you in trouble. No question. Um, you know but it's your own creativity. So this is a moment to selfishly be yourself. Truly, gate one is like, this. The, it's called inspiration. It's of the self. And so all the individual gates are of the self. So there is a pressure sort of pushing you a little bit. It wants to sustain, allow it. And when creative things come through, don't you dare throw it off to, oh, this is stupid. Oh, that's silly. Oh, I'm gonna look silly. Put all that stuff aside. And just be your four-year-old self and be like, do you think you like it? Does it sound good to you? Is it fun? Does it feel good? Yes. Then again, one, one, two, three, go. Do the creative thing this week that you weren't sure about. Especially if it's start a book or, you know, or something like that. You start writing An a book. individual expression of your creativity coming from that core, from the heart of your being that is your identity center. Right. That you can't explain until it shows up. So as it shows up, suddenly you know more about yourself. If you quell this with any kind of mental activity, you will know less about yourself. If you don't quell it, you will come to know so much more about yourself. And then you'll understand why strategy, type, and authority matter so much because you'll be following it. You'll see it at work.